Okay, right, I'm going to just introduce Inez, uh, though most of you know her as well as I do, I'm sure. I know that some of you have worked with her already. Um, but Inez Simpson um, has been changing the world with her Simpson protocol. Um, I'm looking forward to, to learning about it and more about it. So I'm going to hand over to you, Inez. Okay. And. Um, yeah, Take it away, and when you're, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be in the background. I was going to switch my camera off, um, okay. and switch my sound off. So, in fact, I think we'll mute everyone, and then you can okay. unmute yourself, so that there's no one, no dis disruption. If anyone's got any questions during, uh, if you want to put it in the Q and A box or in the chat box, yeah. and you know, I can, I can kind of let Inez know that you've asked a question. Okay. So, yeah, that would be the ideal thing. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, okay. um, away you go. Okay. So okay. Uh, first of all, I was just going to pretend that, um, Freddie asked me a little bit of my bio. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, sorry. I, I, I was going to, I did ask you and then uh, I did try <laughs> to put it in the chat box before when I messaged you, cause I'm terrible at things like this. As you can see, you know, I'm, I can it's paper. fine. It's fine. I the first person I ever hypnotized. I was ten years old. Um, I was my brother had hypnotized me with uh, fascination, you know, the shiny pen, while and then glued me to the wall and all that kind of stuff. I started hypnotizing my girlfriends. <laughs> so luckily, God was looking after things. I didn't get any people with major issues, and we just did the clucking like chickens mostly. Anyway, so from there, I just forgot about it. I went through life. I did fishing uh, for salmon on the west coast of Canada. Did a, mostly uh, work with um, hotels and service industry. And then in my late 40s, I guess, uh, I started twitching. I knew there was something else I had to do. So I went out and learned how to be a hairdresser. That didn't work for me. I mean, it was fun learning, but that wasn't it. And all of a sudden, my mom went to a course, and she thought it was going to be a psychic reading course, and it turned out to be a hypnosis course, and my light bulb went on. And I said, that's it. What am I on? What the heck am I doing? You know, and that's what happened. So by, that took me to the year 2000 when I started doing hypnosis formally. And from there, I started, uh, I was lucky enough to have been taught by Jerry Kine who was a great mentor. He was just an absolute greatest hypnotist, bar a few maybe, somewhere on the same level. But you know, for me, you know, when you have first get into hypnosis and you have that person that you, seems to know everything to you, you know? And Jerry was that, and he was great. He said, you have to practice, you have to continue to experiment. You can't just leave us here. You have to keep moving us forward. So we took that. And I had learned regression to cause from him and uh, was doing quite well, but I ran into a few issues, right? Uh, that um, I couldn't necessarily have everyone tell me what was happening to them. And maybe me being a woman, if I was a man with a man, uh, he didn't really want to tell how the rape went. He didn't want to tell me who the players were necessarily. So what I did, I started experimenting with allowing them to do all the work by themselves so that it was all internal and I didn't need to know about it, but I still managed. And that's how Simpson protocol evolved because it continued. It wasn't just from Elman and Jerry that I was getting all that information. I had uh, added in things from the ideas of, uh, the other side because Elman and <laughs> Erickson were not friends, but I did uh, share Erickson's ideas of language. And in the 50s and 60s, people said, you know, we can only hypnotize 50% of the people. And it wasn't, that wasn't the truth. It just was, we didn't know how. Now, once we started adjusting language, uh, that changed. And now we're probably, I guess, at the 1% that doesn't allow still. Got to have somebody out there that still resistant whatever that means. So from there on, I just started to evolve constantly. And then pretty soon I was teaching at conventions and uh, it was called 
Esdale and beyond, because I can take people into these deep states supposedly that everybody thinks is so difficult. But it's not difficult. And from there, it wound up saying that the students started calling it the, the Simpson Protocol. And so I accepted that and it became the Simpson Protocol. So this is now about uh, 20 years in, or 15 years anyway, since I started really working Simpson Protocol. And I used it for everything. People, people, you know, that uh, commercial with the red sauce, I use that on everything. Yeah, so that's the sort of thing. What I like about the Sim Simpson Protocol is that it's totally non-judgmental. I'm not involved whatsoever. Uh, the person's what I consider the higher mind. It's a construct, as Bob Burns, our friend, would say. It's a construct. It's real or imagined. It doesn't matter what the person believes. They don't have to be all spiritual. I work with anyone. But the spiritual ones are fun to work with. <laughs> they're only because, I'll tell you why. Because in most senses, they're open to possibility more than uh, what I would consider a muggle. A muggle is a person who doesn't believe in magic, or if you were a Harry Potter fan. And if you are open to the possibility that magic is there, you can create anything. So that's sort of the philosophy, a little bit of what uh, Simpson Protocol is. Um, so we as practitioners do not lead anything. Their mind leads the whole thing. Um, so Oh, there's a big thing. That's a long thing to read. Uh, so I won't look, read it right now. Um, but so the whole thing was that you didn't interfere. You didn't uh, make a decision for them of what was coming next. So it was all, it's all based on questions. Questions and getting to a state of hypnosis where they allow their higher mind there are aspects of whatever. The superconscious is a construct and people say, what does it mean? I say, well, it means it knows everything that you need to know about you. That's all. I, you know, do I have, if I define it completely, it will minimize it. A definition will minimize it just by the state of language. Our language minimizes everything. So if you can keep it as simple as that, everything is about simplicity. Everything is about uh, just allowing the mind to address it. And you never second guess an answer from, from the client, ever. So you might, in the back, there's some judgment. I mean, we can't help our judgment, it's always there. But you are not allowing it to come out. You don't allow your judgment to come out. Many times I'm working with a client and I'll have a judgment in there. I still won't say, well, you're doing this or doing that or whatever. You know, it's not my business to do that. All I'm doing is making sure I get them through to the other side of the issue. So, and it's also letting the mind address, instead of just addressing the symptom, we are addressing anything and everything that has caused or affected it in any way. So even with a smoker, you'd have, you know, the person might quit smoking in that first session like normal, but they may need more work done because we are covering everything, including all the programming they've taken in, uh, you know, like the boxes of pictures, all that stuff, societal boxing, total hypnosis coverage from the media, from everything. So what we're doing is a holistic practice. We are practicing body, mind, spirit, and soul. So that means that we do everything physically that needs to be addressed. We do everything all the way through. But we don't ask, we only ask what needs to be addressed. It's always up to the mind what it addresses. So, um, so that's nice to meet you. So that's very nice, Dan. So anyway, Simpson Protocol is something that you learn to do. And sad to say, I have to teach it with a script because I have to write it down. Now, if it's written down, people think that's the way it's supposed to be. <laughs> if I could do no writing it down, it would be awesome because it would come from you constantly and I wouldn't have to break you of using the script. 
<laughs> you know, but initially when people are learning, they have to see it, they have to re read it, they have to do that. So it's massively uh, different from the point of view that people say, well, I'd like to cross the T's and drop the I's. I'd like to do exactly what you do. You can't do exactly what I do. I want you to do what you do. Uh, and it's still done in the style of Simpson Protocol. If you do not pass, um, if you put your uh, own judgment in, you're not doing Simpson Protocol. If you are allowing them to do all the work, you're doing Simpson Protocol. So uh, that you are just there to enhance and help. So it's not for people who like to be in charge. So. But most people, and Marina can vouch, I would think, uh, she's done the training with me before, is that they accept, you start to trust that that part of their mind, that part of a connection to you, is also totally working always. And you will get actual questions to ask that aren't written down from your own mind. And then if you ask, if it says yes, you, you ask it to do it. And if it says no, then you move on because then you didn't get the right thing. So it's, yes, it's content free because if I do it at a, a class, if I do it at a convention, I never know what I'm working on. Not a thing. Now, obviously when a client comes to you, they tell you stuff. And it's a good thing to listen because they need to be heard. But you don't, I don't need to know very much of anything. So, uh, for example, in the Canadian convention, I did a guy who had PTSD. Um, I didn't know. I asked him to come up because he offered. And I started working with him. And he went and did everything. And at the end, it was a very quite intense in session for him. It's pretty easy for me. <laughs> but it was pretty intense for him. And at the end, when the students were asking questions, one question came up, would this work for PTSD? Well, I usually leave, I'm a little bit like Carl Smith, I leave the D off, but uh, so I, I said yes, and then he said, well, she just did. So uh, understand that one session, because I would never suggest you do one session, because there's lots more usually to clean up, but that guy only had one session with it. Even though I offered to do more, he said he was happy. So not, I can't push people into having some more. So at that time, and he's still doing quite well, as I know. And so you don't know have to know anything. That's why it works with everything. Because you don't know. Let's say somebody comes in. They want to change their whole world. Right? They say, I want to, I'm here. But I really would like to be there. Where this is this and this is that. And I just want everything to be so great. Okay, so where would you start, right? So you just get super conscious mind to bring the first issue up that needs to be addressed. That's it. And it's there. You take a sub, so a subjective unit of distress for the client's knowing. Not for you, because you don't really care. Because you're just going to take them through. But you need to know. SP is sort of a juggle between having the conscious get as much information as it needs and the rest of the mind to do the rest of the work. So you are always sort of, it's a little bit of a confusional for the conscious. That's a little intentionally because this, you don't want the conscious interfering, but the conscience can always interfere. It doesn't matter what state of hypnosis you're in. It's all that kind of stuff because it's always present and it's going to be present. The first session you ever do with SP is going to be really present. It's not feeling safe yet. It's not really, uh, it has to know what's going on. So you, you are playing to the sub, um, to the conscious more in the first session than any other session. Because you have to get the conscious to be total on the sidelines, observing and supporting without. So sometimes you have this thing about people that they say their expectations of hypnosis are erroneous. And many times I've had that with students in class. They, they'll they say, well, I've never been, if I ask, I'm, I'm going to pick on the UK because because <laughs> Freddie's there. But when I did a class in, in I think, uh, where was it? In Heathrow. Yeah. 
So the class is 25 people and I asked them all why they were there. And they said, I don't really think, I, so many of them said, I don't think I've been in hypnosis or if not, I haven't been in deep hypnosis. And I said, well, what's your expectation of hypnosis? And you find out that they believe a lot of the stuff that clients believe. So I just uh, had to sort of show them that. And the funniest thing was all these people who didn't think they could go in deep or they didn't even think they were in, all went to Esdale, about three quarters of them. So, you know, it's expectation. Now, you make sure that the client has the correct expectation with a pre-talk and, and intake, and then they just let it happen. Now, the other strange things we do, I am saying that can be completely content-free, doesn't need to be. If the client's gonna tell you some stuff, you might get some questions out of it, and that would be a good thing. I can make it totally content-free. So, um, getting back, I lost my train of thought here. Let's see. Um, Freddie, what did I just say? Do you remember? <laughs> Have I got you in trance? You, you were saying about being content free. And I, okay. I have to agree with you. You know, the less, the less we know, in fact, the better. Because as human beings, it's so easy to think, I know how you feel. And what I, say I know. My, what I say to my students is the moment you think, I know how you feel, you could be a thousand miles away. Assume you know nothing about how they feel. Yeah. So I hope that's put you back onto where you were. But that's sort of a, well, it's taking on a different tangent, but that's good. Uh, I had a client who had cancer and uh, we sort of came, I'm not saying I never make judgments. I don't let the judgment out, right? So it said, they, they said, because this is her guidance was talking to her saying, how, whatever the real or imagined, and I'm not going to get into that debate. But uh, she said, I need to accept. And I said, okay. So when she had said acceptance, of course, my mind goes to maybe she needs acceptance because she's going to die, right? But then I never said any of that. I just sit in the back of my mind. And I'm showing how wrong that is because the next time she went for tests, it was gone. The moment she accepted it, it just healed. Now, don't I had nothing to do with it. Uh, I don't have anything to do with any of these things that happen, but they happen constantly and always without you, as long as you can stay out of the way, right? So if you stay, if you get in the way, you will actually minimize what the client will get. So, um, so what else is about? It's totally just a whole bunch of questions that's a basic questions that cover body mind and spirit and soul and then from there you go on your own we have advanced now when you get to where we call high i mean this is a construct you're going to go to peace which is um somnambulism and you're going to go as close to esdale as you can it's not important that they gain esdale unless they're starting to do birthing and i want them to have esdale or something like that or surgery uh, but I don't, it's usually too profound somnambulism, most people go. Now, if I want them to go, I can help them go deeper than that. But I don't need to push them. I find, you know, deepening, people deepen, deepen, deepen. The easiest thing is just to ask them to go as deep as they can go. <laughs> and then from there, the next time, they'll probably go deeper. But right now, that's going to be great for them. They're the whole idea of SP is you're never telling them what to do, ever. You never tell them what to do, but you ask them to do it. And if they can, they'll do it. So it's the easiest thing. I remember Jerry saying once, you know, you get people to close their eyes. He's, well, you know, I found that it was really easy if you just ask them to close their eyes. <laughs> you know, we make everything much more difficult than it needs to be. So if you get into a simplicity, even people that I teach Simpson Protocol to would like to embellish it at lots of times. And if I'm doing the training with them and the certification with them, I try to so show them that it simple is better. You allow more to come in. The more you enhance things, the more you create things for them, it minimizes what's, a, what's available for them. Because now, you know, so it's the same as uh, when they're, taking their outcome, 
you want there to be a broad open possibility of the outcome yes you want them to stop if they would come to stop smoking then there you will still have to find out if they really want to <laughs> or if they're going to be uh, are you really here for this you know you know I, many times in the old days you know somebody would come for smoke smoking and i don't know that first year i was learning and have my scripts there and all that stuff and and they'd come in and they'd say oh well i'm, I'm really here for sexual dysfunction <laughs> And you're going, okay, now what do I do? Well, I never have that issue because everything I do is symptom protocol. So I never have to be concerned about what script to use or what I have to say, anything. The less I say, the better. And I come up with ideas to ask. And if it says no, I move on. So I'll get information myself, you know, intuitively you tend to. Now, some of us think that's, the best thing ever and others say well I just I will ignore it but don't ignore it just ask the question and if it says no you move on you never enforce what your intuition brings up or you never enforce any ideas you get consciously that you ask but everything that's done is done by their mind in accordance to how they function so that's as simple as it is. So maybe, um, can you tell us more about my induction? Okay, well, you could use any induction, really. But I like to use the Elman induction, except I've changed the languaging for the current times, and not just to COVID. I'm talking about, you know, how uh, cultures have changed. In the 50s and 60s, when Elman was around, you know, doctors knew everything. And it was like, yes, we'll do everything you said. Yes, we will. Nowadays, we're not like that. We are, we need to be allowed to do what we want to do. So I always, I've changed the language. But I just use a simple Elman induction. The best it is about two minutes long. Right? And then after that, I just deepen them. And then I go, what Elman used to do is go to get the SL. He'd go a few A to B and C. and B. But it was done. Um, people say there's no suggestion in SDL. There's a lot of pre-suggestion in SDL. If you look at, you know, you're going to go down this escalator and you're doing this beforehand. He talks all about that stuff. There's still suggestion there. But the way we do it in Simpson Protocol is we don't, we do the, the, we go all the way down, A, B, wherever you want to go. And from there, when we know they're as deep as they can go, because we've asked, take the client as deep as you can go. <laughs> and then they're there. So I use the element online too. Yes, I, I don't lift up the hand. I've left it out, you know, I mean, Jason Linnett, I know, I think he does, you know, an arm stiffens the board because that's a level two, uh, the process, right? Level two of depth in the process. So I don't bother with it. And it's just easy. Uh, in fact, I think it's easier online than it is in live. And I've simplified it. That's probably why. The simplification, again, shows you even I have many limiting beliefs. I've had trainings in the past about all kinds of stuff. And you have to maintain this or you have to do that. And every time I break through a limiting belief, it gets simpler. So it's very well done. It's very easy online. So then about the numbers, I always have this, you know, thing that people tell me. Well, when I use the almond, they never lose the numbers. Oh, my God, they just never lose the numbers. I said, okay, what kind of language are you using? So we checked that out. And then from there, the languaging is very, uh, always just allowing language because 50% of the people you are going to be working with are not going to be like telling, being told what to do, right? So that's good. So the Elman is very simple, two minutes. If I can keep the, <laughs> the people learning from re-embellishing it, to you know a relaxation exercise because relaxation isn't hypnosis 
hypnosis isn't relaxation, but we combine them, right? That they are sort of part of each of the life of hypnosis. So, uh, you know, they, people who come from doing, um, let's say, a progressive relaxation seems too short to them. So they try to embellish it back to relaxation. Now, in Simpson Protocol, you don't want a lot of, lot of body relaxation because you are working, um, you want them to be very comfortable. The language is slightly different. It's very comfortable instead of going, keep stopping, relaxing, 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 relaxing. And then they say, well, superconscious mind doesn't answer. I mean, the, the fingers aren't answering. The fingers aren't answering because the body's so relaxed, they can't be bothered to move. They're still one person. They're all one person. It's not like we dissected them and put pieces out there. It's just one person. We are directing most of the work to go to the inner mind, as we call it, past the conscious. So, you know, uh, bypass of the critical factor of the conscious mind. This never mean that you have that full all the time. Doesn't matter what level. I could take them to support, which is the deepest supposed level we know at this time. So we could do that, but they could still interfere if something came up. There's part of them that listens. And if part of it is you're pushing their buttons, they'll interfere to a certain extent. No matter, no matter. As Jerry would say, we have our ways of getting around that. <laughs> now, Jerry has been gone for a couple of years now, oh, maybe more. And I still hear him talking to my ear. <laughs> so I learned all the rules of the mind from Jerry. I learned all that background. And the background was always experiment, experiment, experiment. So one of the trainers that teaches in Dutch says that... Uh, SP is like a canvas, and she does her own painting on it. I really like that. I thought it was incredible because that's why this is not how you're not me doing it. You are you doing it. Just taking your judgment out, knowing how to get them to the right places, and understanding that when you get to that high place, maybe some people will think this is crazy, you can actually ask telepathic questions. So telepathic questions are very easy to ask. And the first time you ask it, I'll ask Marina, not if you think it was scary the first time, because <laughs> you thought, oh, is there really going to be an answer? And then you find out there's an answer. <laughs> in fact, in one of the French trainings lately, um, the French trainer, he had a, a guy there, and he said, oh, that's really BS. How are you going to do that? So he turned off his microphone, or, so, or he couldn't hear, right? He couldn't hear anything. He, he turned off the speaker, I guess, whatever it was. And the other guy, they were practicing in a room. So the one guy took him through the protocol. And at the end, the guy said, I don't think you, I, my mic was turned off, or my thing was turned off. I heard every question. Now that's unusual about telepathic. You don't, only some people seem to pick them up. I've had that happen. But this guy picked up the whole session, answer, or at least he thought he did. I don't know if he did. So, but anyway, he had the outcome. So that's all that mattered, but he hadn't heard a word through the whole thing. So that's interesting. But he thought he did, which is even more interesting. So Simpson Protocol maybe is a little out there for some people, knowing that it's the very simplest thing you can do. It's just astounding because people can have healings. It happens in the chair. It sometimes does. You had nothing to do with it. Get over yourself. They are open to possibility. It's all you ever ask of them. Right? So you don't get judgment and you don't get accolades either because if you had to take the accolades when it didn't work and they didn't have full remission and they didn't have all this stuff then you would have to say well gee i did something wrong but you didn't because you didn't do anything right the first time either everything is just as it is has nothing to do really with what you do is it maybe a skill of thinking questions maybe 
I don't know. I just think it's a very simple way of doing work. So, uh, Mark? Yeah. Yes, I do remember that. Where are you hiding, Mark? Oh, there you are. <laughs> yes, 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 of course I did. Uh, this gentleman and I, I brought him up to the front of the class and we were experimenting with SP. And we started, and I think this gentleman has still all on his own, but <laughs> he, we got him into the place of, and he started doing some healing with some people. It was pretty interesting. Mark, did you ever hear any more about what happened with that? No, I didn't hear anything further. No, no I know. That's the only know, thing with the things, thing with things that, when you do those when experiments do those somewhere. Experiments. Yeah, Mark, I'm going to have to get you to, uh, because I'm starting to echo. That's great. Yeah, that was, for, I was thinking about you the other day. Ah, that's probably why you're here. <laughs> so that's interesting. No, so we were always experimenting. I think um, at the Canadian convention, I had, uh, a, a, I don't know if you know him. Uh, he teaches... Uh, Dr. Tim Horton, do you know, you've heard of him, have you? Anyway, he's from Florida and he does uh, NFL, NLP, sorry, FNLP, I don't know, I get his things mixed up, but he's a really good hypnotist. And he had never experienced Simpson Protocol, so he said, do you want to do it as my guinea pig? And we did, and I didn't have very much time because it was an hour presentation and uh, Ted uh, Robinson, who I was teaching with at the time, um, took up about 15 or 20 minutes of that 50 minutes that we have. So I put him, I put him in trance and I did the work and then I said, I don't know if this was very good for the class that was watching, but it was good for him because I had to get it done. I only had a few minutes left. So I said, super conscious mind, can you now just go and check out all those questions I usually ask in the manual or even anywhere else. And can you finish it up for me right now? So it did. And uh, <laughs> the, the, I think the class thought it was a little crazy. And maybe it is. Maybe I am a little bit crazy. But I'm willing to try anything once at least. So everything just expands constantly because of that. Yeah. So, hmm. is it be, uh, then a, a possibility of a taste? Not now. I would love to do it for you privately. I could do that. That's not a problem. Or even in a separate workshop. Not so, because what do we know? 12.30. Yes, I could get you in trance in... 10 minutes, let's say, completely into that place of high. And after that, I never do another induction ever. Never need to because I teach people self-hypnosis in that first session. So they always put themselves in next time, next time, anytime. And it's, you know, in somnambulism, when you create self-hypnosis, you need to compound it for them a little bit so that they know how to do it. Now, the benefit of doing it in high is that you don't need to compound. You just say super conscious mind. Can you compound it to the point where it works for them all the time? So they could come back a year later and they would still follow your directions. And maybe that would be for everyone. I don't know. But uh, I always have students saying, well, this person hasn't been here for a year. You sure I should just use those uh, triggers? I said, yeah. They're there. They accepted them. They'll just use them. Don't see the whole thing about doing Simpson protocol is more is you getting in trust and in trust with what people say in your first one thing is being confident in yourself. And the other thing is understanding that that levels of their mind can do anything. And it's totally possible. Their conscious mind will think they can't do it a year later. But if you give in to that, you're actually shooting yourself in the foot, as Jerry would say, because now you've proved to them that they couldn't have done it. So I never do that. I'll just say, no problem, just sit down. And I'll just say, super conscious mind, take them to peace, let me know when they're there. And there they go. 
every now and then that one takes a little bit longer than normal because the conscious is interfering and trying and then it gives up and then it just goes so that's a big thing in sp is keep it simple um say that superconscious mind is higher consciousness we could say but i'm not we could say that remember i'm not defining it the aspects of i don't think personally i don't think superconscious and higher mind are one and the same but uh that's another story and i still think it's very much you just want to keep it open Superconscious is the part of you that can know anything you need to know about you. Inez, can I ask a question? Yes, please. I did write it, but I think you might have missed it. The question, oh, I, I, the question is, when, when you, you ask questions of the, of the superconscious, do you? Mm -hmm. And do you ask, that, is the, does the client speak or do you get the, get the communication unconscious? No, I set up idiomotor responses. Right. Okay. Right. That's the question. And yeah. yeah, I well, set up, you know, and even when they go to Esdale, uh, that was the whole thing about me and Esdale because everybody thought, wow, this is great. Because in Esdale, if they go there, they're not going to answer you. Yeah. Well, that's they're not going to talk. They're not going to move. They're not going to do anything. Mm. So what I did was I thought about the years I learned about pain. You know, you left hypnosis in a certain part of the body so it stayed comfortable. And I thought, well, why can't I do the opposite? So I would leave one arm in somnambulism hmm. and put the rest in Esdale. Hmm. So it's all that, but it's always, um, doesn't mean how deep they go. They can come up just as fast. Hmm. <laughs> so when, if someone's not feeling safe, they can come up just as fast. But in this process, the, I've never had anybody come out and say, I'm not going to do this. Never had that happen. Other, other, one of my uh, students did, but I don't know if they had followed the whole process. So, so are there a cer certain set of questions you teach your students to ask? I do. That's the script part. And I say, this is a basic. This is basic. Go through it and, and make sure you learn how to do it. After that, start putting in from what the people give you. If, and if you don't have that, if you're totally content free, just go with what comes to you. And, um, but the basis of the questions is body, mind, and spirit. So some of them, <laughs> well, you know, Freddie, you know what Brazilians are like? Yeah. And I teaching in Brazil, I had two uh, of the students were atheists. They said they were atheists. So I said, isn't that sort of like a negative hallucination? You got to believe in it or see it before you, <laughs> you don't see it. Yeah. I said, I, I got that. Okay. So then he said, well, I can't ask those spiritual questions. Are you working? With you, or are you working with your client? These are holistic questions. They have the right to say yes or no. It's not a. It's not something you're telling them they have to be. Mm. You're covering everything holistically for because no matter what, if um, youth knew there's gravity, we don't know there's gravity, but the apple falls off the tree. So if this if this part of their mind knows everything for them, you can ask anything. And you'll get a yes or a no, and you just trust that. Now, as I've been doing it for quite a few years, so I have implicit trust in that. Now, Marina's been doing it a sh much shorter time, and she does lots of different styles of hypnosis besides. So, but she has implicit trust, I'm pretty sure. You want to know you yet? Because you, yeah, go ahead and say something. Yes, I actually wanna wanted to, you know, for you to finish and just share my experience very, very quickly, just to say that the fact that um, the superconscious talks to any client. In my practice, very short practice, but still, you know, I didn't have anybody who didn't have a response. And even just the mere fact that the person sits in the chair and something bigger than what they believe about themselves talks through them and they have a physical confirmation of that, that is already a healing experience in itself. So I, I find that just that part, besides all of the other things that, you know, usually other issues get cleared through the session because we come with one problem, but we don't know how many more problems are there connected to those, right? So that gets cleared. And also, this is a little doggy. We did a surrogate hypnosis. 
you can do it uh, through, Ines did it through me to my rescue dog who had an issue. And that worked too. You know, she calmed down. So whether you believe in whatever you believe in, there is something to all of us that is bigger than ourselves. And I think that once you start trusting that, you're going to have a completely different experience. So thank you. Thank you, Marina. That's good. I forgot about your little dog <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I've done quite a few um, surrogates through to animals. We can do sur surrogate through people, especially, let's say, a mother um, using the mother for a two-year-old who's having night terrors, stuff like that. Yeah, it's really ideal because and people who do energy work can get the concepts quite good because uh understand that energy goes all over it doesn't you know doesn't matter if we're doing it online doesn't matter if we're doing it face to face none of it matters because energy goes anywhere and everywhere and so if you can look at it that way the surrogacy thing works really well we do it in class and have astounding uh experiences sometimes you know but that's uh, that's what the 4d glass is about is learning what to do with all these different aspects of things that you can do what i always found different and difficult i should say i know i did used to find it difficult was when people came to me with an issue then i had to start thinking about how am i going to do this how am i going to do this and how am i you know what if I don't get it right? What if I don't use the right technique? I'm talking about the very early days of my work, you know, when I started 1999. And at that time, it was always very stressful for me. So lately, I've had um, a gentleman in Australia who had been working like 20, 25 years and had a very strong practice. He's very good at what he did. And he started using Simpson Protocol. But today, this is two years later, he does not nothing but Simpson Protocol. Now, I don't suggest that to everybody, but he found that he could work with things he couldn't work with before. Because he had limited himself by having to figure out how to do it. And when he didn't have to figure out how to do it, it just did it. And he was happy as hell. So now... and. I think he's a little crazy because he does a lot of work. He does five, six people every day. I was always a little lazier than that. <laughs> I was always, I used to do three people a day, believe it or not. That was me. I was done. Mind you, I started in the business when I was already close to 50. So, you know, it's, I'm not 70 yet. So I guess I was not quite close to 50 yet. Was a little, Can I ask a question? You know, yes. Yeah. Yeah. How much of, what you do, I know you probably won't won't want to answer it in the way that I'm 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 I mean this. But how much of this is about you, your kind of attitude? You know, you've got this this kind of thing about you. It's just a, you know, I I feel I feel better just listening to you, being in your presence. <laughs> and I'm sure that has a big effect on on you know your ability to help people. You know, how much, and how much did you have to work on that? Is that just you? Do you I consciously think... work on kind of clearing your own stuff out when you're working with people? No, but I do a lot of self-work and I have along the way 20 years and it's never ending because it's constant. There's always something coming up. Life continues. And so I, I walk the talk, I guess. Yeah. But, um, but I don't think it is me, a person. A lot of people have said that to me, and I think it's just because I have so much trust in the process. Yeah. So when the other people get as much trust as I do, like the guy I talk about in Australia, when he has that trust, now he'll work with anything, works from anything from addictions to any, you know, just anything who walks through the door, and we're not concerned. Because when... You used to know you'd get the intake and this guy's coming for this or this. I don't know what walks through my door every day. Yeah. I never know what it is. And I'm sure, Freddie, you're pretty versatile. You've been there. You're in that place where you yeah. don't need to know everything ahead of time. So you're in prepared and you're all this. You're just well, going to do what you're going to do. Well, I, I work in the same way as you, not with the same protocol, obviously, because I've just learned, I've just been listening to you. But 
you know, what, it's the reason I've been training people for since 99 as well. And, I, and people say to me, how could you take someone off the street? There was nothing about therapy. And then after five days of your diploma course, send them out to you know, change people's lives. You know, mm. how could they possibly have that? Well, the, the reason is the same for you because you, we assume that I say to them, the first thing is to assume that you know nothing and the client knows everything. And all you have to do, this is how I kind of see it in my mind, is get them out of their own way. And all we are as a catalyst. Yeah. We get them into a state of mind where they can get in touch with their own abilities to change. And yeah. then we let them do it. And the, the problem comes when people do certain kinds of hypnotherapy training where they think they've got to come up with the answer. They've got to come up with the protocol. They've got to come up with the strategy. And that's what I'm saying. The moment you get into thinking, I know how you feel, or I know what you need to do, you're a million miles off the mark. But doing what you do, it's so clean. And it's, you know, it allows the client to make the change. Even if they may think afterwards that you're like, you know, an angel because they come in with a problem, they go out without it. Um, I don't know if they think that. I've had a few that don't. <laughs> <laughs> So, you yeah. know, sometimes, uh, you know, all this work needs to be take some processing. You know, it says, oh, it's done, it's done, it's done. Yeah. And then, you know, you're going to go home and, you you know, you say after you've worked with somebody who's had some very heavy duty work done, you'll say, you know, be nice to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Take care. And they don't listen to you and they just go and do work and stuff and everything. And then they have some processing times. They don't sleep good or something happens. Right. And you said, um, yeah, it's a little nicer if you treat yourself like you'd like to be treated when you just did the I, I actually put that uh, yeah. over your life, right? I, I put it in, I put that in as a suggestion now. Yeah, me too. It, you yeah, know, too. as you know, from today, you're going to be kinder to yourself, look after yourself, yeah. treat yourself, you know, it, with a bit of kindness. So many yeah. people don't, you're right. Yeah. No, and but no, no. I, I think what you do is phenomenal. And, and the joy of it, as you said, is that because you trust that, that the, the client's unconscious mind knows the answers and has the resources to overcome it, and you just let them get them into a place where they can get in touch with their own resources. That's, That's how exactly I work as well. So, you know, it's, it's such a sweet way of working. You don't have to, like you say, I don't, it doesn't matter who walks through the door because at some point I'm going to, I'm going to, say so you don't want to do this anymore but it's almost like as a part of you continues to do it and they'll go yes i say well i'm going to hypnotize you and we're going to speak to that part of you and no one's ever said no that doesn't make any sense you know, <laughs> and so that's how we go on i mean like you said you know ask ask the part of them that's running that to to explain to the conscious mind because you say like the conscious mind is always there explain yeah. what it's been trying to do for them what the positive it eventually starts to float off now and then, you know, when they start to feel safe, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's so, what my son would say, the rapport is there to be lost, not to be gained. That's right. And the whole thing about the trust is that you can lose rapport so easily once you take judgment and move in. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so much. Uh, Pat said the, um, she would like me to take her through the uh, steps of SB. I, I can do that. Um, and Susie says, does it work to bypass secondary gain? Yes, secondary gain is a big thing and we definitely address it. Uh, I've sort of thought about as much things, I haven't thought of everything, but every class I do, the, the thing evolves. Who knows what it is, but the thing evolves. And people, everybody in class is usually pretty in the intense four days because we are doing real, um, therapy on each other nobody's role playing everybody's allowing it to happen that might be the one person maybe out of whatever but it, it's unusual uh it doesn't happen so it is can be tense but yes secondary gain definitely keeps people stuck and uh, so we get into that that's a lot of the questions are all those things that you're asking me they are in the question you know is there any is there any secondary gain or is there any kind of beliefs is there anything we go through anything and everything that normally you would be doing in as um addressing in in your way um 
but you always just ask the question in the super conscious mind when you do it let me know when it's done and that's it pretty much so the process is you get them deep and in high now what do we call it um i call it high and guidance now guidance it when for people as you you might know this being turkish that translation of simple words in english like that cannot be done very easily in other languages so uh you know we get to well what am i supposed to call it is this a ghost is this that is this that no 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 it's support it's whatever the mind brings to them for support if it's archangel michael welcome that's great i'm glad they have that but if if it's just their dog or their mother that the memory of their mother it doesn't matter what it is it's about giving them some support besides you their own mind providing the support that they need to do the work go ahead uh you know, uh, I, well, I actually uh, took one session from Ines and also she offered uh, from herself, I mean, to do a session for my cat who was dying. And uh, as a hypnotist and also as a client, I can share some of my views, my observations of how the session one was. Would you like to do that? Would you like me to do that? Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, for this session, I am, I am a hypnotist uh, who is doing hypnosis since about six years and I am an NLPer and in Turkey hypnosis is not allowed, only reserved to doctors, so I base my work always to NLP. However, I am fascinated with every method that is available. I mean, I like to just observe, ob absorb any information I can find about any type of hypnosis or NLP. And there's also one other thing that I am doing. It's called Jinen Qigong. It is wisdom Qigong. That's this Chinese technique where they heal people incredibly fast. Anyway, so there was one moment where I wanted to have a session and I was following Ines time so I requested and she immediately gave me one because there was an empty space and it was the first time I'm going to have an online session with somebody else it was fascinating the thing that I noticed that although I didn't know how this worked this SP protocol and higher uh, super conscious mind uh, the thing that influenced me was uh, the exuding conference uh, confidence that she had and the way she enveloped I mean I had full confidence because you believed in that I thought there is something really very interesting that is going to happen and the questions were without hesitation she was asking the questions and they were so deep and they were so interesting and my finger was replying to those questions like at the moment she said is she aware that there is guidance and my finger said no and I said what is that guidance that I am not aware of so I loved it and it was very deep I did not know what happened, but it just may be so fine or so well afterwards. After my studies, I learned uh, that actually we, people have this deep ability to transform themselves. I mean, this every, all of us knows, but this is not only the SP protocol, this is your confidence and what you guide the client uh, to bring about in themselves. So that was my experience. Thank you very much. It was both a learning procedure and also uh, a, a, um, um, a very uh, wonderful session. Without knowing what happened, I, I saw that everything cleared out. And in the, in the second one, you worked on my cat. And I was fascinated that this can be done on her so uh, thank you very much it was wonderful for me it taught me a lot thank you you're welcome thank you okay um yeah but i don't think it's just me is it? i when i teach it people but they have to get into that place of trust and confidence so as long as they're first getting into it they definitely will have not as good a result as me necessarily they'll have always have results even now when I take them through certification to make sure 
that they are doing it the right way for them and not in, you know interfering by doing it the wrong way, the wrong language, whatever. So, but when I do that, I notice that once they got the confidence, sometimes it includes a session. <laughs> My certification will include a session with you necessarily if that confidence just isn't there. You're brand new at it, you're this, you're that, whatever conscious things that you have thought up that why you're not going to be good at it. So um, usually by the time we're finished, most of the students, I would say, are great. And the ones that have been doing it for a while, sometimes I think they're surpassing how good I am. And that's great because that means that there's a lot of people out there that are doing the work and that's good. Yeah. Can, I, can I ask a question? Yeah. Do, to, to learn the Simpson protocol, would you have to work with you personally or do you, is there some way you can read it or you could learn it online? No, I only teach it live. Even online, it's still live. Right. And uh, I do have other people training it in different languages. So we have Dutch training, we have German training, we have French training. Uh, we're on the way to have, we have Portuguese training from right. Brazil. Uh, we have uh, luckily lots of English speaking ones that, you know, uh, that I taught like New Zealand and Australia. You may know Lance Baker uh, and he teaches Simpson yeah. Protocol. But no, we do it live online because it is a, um, a such a shift of taking a hypnotist thought and taking it from being the doer to being the non-doer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And just being able to process and, and some of the stuff is a little bit woo woo when we get through near the end. I mean, they, you know, the surrogacy isn't woo woo necessarily, but sometimes they, you, they need to shift a lot. And I used to do two days and then two days later, and it, my limiting belief was that if they practiced, then they'd know more. But that isn't how it worked. It was the shift that was needed, and it was needed to do it in like four days of training. Right. So now the four days online is more like six half days. Right. But uh, because I find that you don't want somebody looking at the screen for eight hours. Hmm. Right. So, but that's the only way we teach it. And um, there, I have to say some of the trainers that I train to be trainers have done phenomenal work. There's one in Belgium that he's uh, actually started helping regenerate organs. Now, is that possible? Like, see, only the only thing that limits you is the limiting belief that it isn't. You mm. see, he doesn't have that limiting belief. And when I first met him, he was very analytical and very straight. Um, and he still uh, works that way. He's still very that way. But he's now open to all possibilities. Mm. So interesting things happen, but it isn't about you. It's never about you. Um, one training in Germany, one of the guys was training the next day, he had a client coming and it was already a client who'd been with him for quite a while. And he was what they call a naturopath a hypnotist because he could work in the hospital and do all kinds of stuff. But this woman halfway through the session, he was treating and working with her with, um, cancer, uh, what do you call it? Cervical cancer. And she started to bleed, so he, I mean, he wasn't scared about it. Or I, I think your mind will never give you anything to work with that's not appropriate for you. I, I know I'm a little strange, but that's okay. So I think there's that law. So, um, so he just took her to the hospital, and the tumor had come away from the side. Now, it could have been coincidence. It could be anything. I'm not going to say that we didn't do it. She did her open to possibility, answering all the questions, anything that was standing in the way. Anything was removed that she did not need any longer to live life. I was working with a client this morning on, uh, and uh, I asked her guidance to tell her what it was that she needed. And she told me perfectly. She said, I've been using illness my whole life to escape. And as she added a few more things, and I said, well, that's, see, I never told her that. I had nothing to do with it. This is what she got, and that's all that was needed. So I said, you, are you wanting to address that? So then we went into, and that was good. We were already halfway through. 
and I know I work a lot with this person because she's a little unique. Um, she doesn't do the computer very well. She doesn't, and when she was here, she was, she came to me before COVID, so I had her there, and I knew she's one of these people that seems to be quite open and psychically oriented and all that. So I can just talk to her on the phone, and she'll give me the answer with the voice. And anybody could do that if they get into trust that process well enough. But most people wouldn't trust the process well enough if you started off with them on a phone. Maybe you will. That maybe that's one of my limiting beliefs. Mm. But I don't know that person on the other side or the phone. I haven't touched them yet. And I don't mean physically. I just haven't felt them yet. You know? But it's interesting. It's just the whole thing. The mind always knows what you need to know. And I don't. I don't know what you need to know. So, so SP used to help people with chronic pain, like chronic migraines. Yes, <laughs> that's the simple answer. Um, usually, and, and there's lots of things that'll address pain. Come on, there's uh, and chronic pain. Uh, I'm sure Freddie does it every day. Uh, what's uh, pain to go? Uh, there's all kinds of different things. And yes, superconscious will do that. But I think what I the difference is is that from my point of view, everything around that will be also addressed. It isn't just the symptom that's released, right? And even the others though, they're not. I, I have to say they are doing lots of heavy work. I'm not saying this is the best and only thing in the world to do. It's the best in the world to do for me and the clients that are attracted to it. And that's what I say. That's all I'll say about it. So, you know, because uh, purposely I'm talking about hypnosis everywhere now that uh, I've been doing that program for two years on the radio, and it was mostly for this sort of idea. Everybody's saying, you know, I don't like what you do, I don't like what you do, bicker, bicker, bicker. I just wanted to show every aspect of hypnosis and that it was good for everyone and anyone, and that it was good for, and I think I've managed to do that in the two years. I was there, I'm pretty proud of that. Mm. And I thank Freddie, he was there too. So, Understand that everyone that does hypnosis, it has to go from you. If you are not feeling it, if you're not sensing that this would be good for you, then I would suggest that you don't take super uh, SP. I, for me, it's yes, I need to make a living, all that stuff. We got all that. But for me, it's about getting people to do this that are able to do this and want to do it. Mm. And that's why when I do the certification, I'll go out of my way to do session with that person, do everything to get them where they need to be to do the work. So that's, uh, but SP is very, goes for anything. And if you don't need to know, we don't need to know the labels even. It's better. In fact, if we can get the client to let go of the label, that's part of the issues mm -hmm. usually. So we can get them to let go of the label. And if once letting go of the label did have to work, didn't it? You understand that right away. Yeah. So how much, if it, when you work with young children? Uh, young children, I haven't worked, I have to say, I live in a sort of like where Freddie lives in the UK. I'm on a, a resort area and it's a small town and, you know, it's very nice. So I work, mostly people retire here. So my bulk of my clientele will be older people, like me. <laughs> or a little bit younger or older, whatever. So young children, the only youngest ones I've worked with are nine years old. And I did the protocol with them. The only thing that was different was that it was much faster. Mm -hmm. Instead of an hour and a half for my first session, after that they go much down because the other sessions are all very much smaller. Uh, but that first sessions, I usually give it an hour and a half when I was doing it all by myself. In the early days, I'd give it two because I didn't always know if I'd be done in time when I first started. So, but now an hour and a half seems to be adequate. So they would do it in like 45 minutes mm. because they don't have the filters we've got. Yeah. Right. So it's easy, but younger children, I would prefer to work through the mother. Or the other caregiver, which one, everyone has the bigger connection, right? 
And uh, do I have a lot of surrogacy? No, because people don't usually know to ask about that. And usually it's people who've been to me before and they'll say, can we do this work? I said, we are allowed to do the work. What we do is we go and ask their higher mind if we're allowed to do the work. And if not, we're shut down. There's nothing to do. My mother's 98. She has dementia. I used to work with her a lot. Now I ask, can I work surrogate? No. Nope. Hmm. nope. So you get it, you have to get over yourself a little bit, don't you? <laughs> is it, can, I, can I ask, Inez, yeah. is there anything you wouldn't work with? No. No. No, and the guy in Australia, he had the same thing now. He said, well, since I've got how to do this, I work with anything that walks through the door. And mm. he said he wouldn't work with a lot of those things before yeah. because he didn't think he had the ammunition. Yeah. And it's only that he trusts it now, you see. Yeah. A lot yeah. of it is the belief of the self in the first place. But there is that other part that you start to trust that what we call the superconscious. Mm. Yeah, I mean, once you get once you get to the point where of understanding that it's the client that does the work and not you. Yeah. Then yeah. you're right. I mean, it doesn't matter what walks through the door. You assume that they already have the answer and the resources. <laughs> yeah, they do. And they just, just like don't know it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they they... To get them into a space where they find that answer. Yeah. Find yeah. the resources. They, a lot of epiphanies happen for them. Sorry, say again? A lot of epiphanies happen for them. Well, yeah. Without you creating them. Yeah. And it's a domino effect. You know, once they think, well, if, 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 I, if that's changed, something that I thought was, you know, I was unable to change, what else yeah. can I change? You know, yeah. and, and those, those, the limiting beliefs I had about their other problems fall away. Yeah, I'm sure it's the same Very for you true. and all and all the all the people on the, uh, that are now panelists, you know, that are here today. Um, the thing about working with people and seeing people change is that you cannot keep your own limitations, can you? No, you just can't. You know, all of your own limiting beliefs and negative thoughts fall away because you just see it happening with other people. So how could you possibly hold on to yourself? Well, I still manage to keep little ones like sometimes yeah. like the whole idea of being able to uh, teach online uh, all those things i know there are small things but I, I used to think there's always a limiting belief there's always one somewhere that i haven't quite addressed for myself that hasn't opened me more to more possibilities well i think you've got to open yourself up to that because you know there's so many people that would want to learn from you we can't get to you in person. And uh, no, that, well, no, I teach this online all the time, but I still think the live is very, very important. And the students seem to agree with that. The ones that are yeah. taking it. Yeah. I, I, I'd much prefer to work with a, a room full of people, you know, so-called live people. Yeah. <laughs> rather than like here. Virtual They're all living. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I would, you know, but that's, it's just the joy of it for me, but I, but it does this, this, this medium does open us up to, to yes. helping a lot more people. Well, the thing is, it's sort of, uh, I think with going back to live, it'll still be a hybrid hmm. because, uh, people, when they're live with you, they can ask the questions in time, they can get it answered. They can do that. All those things. When you're just watching video and a course, Sometimes they'll go, well, you know, they want a question comes up and it isn't asked, answered in that time. And it's a little bit of a setback on that client. They have to go through it again or do, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, whereas with this, uh, if you're doing it, their questions come up and they all learn from each other's questions, which is really the mm. way. And the way we practice is uh, very simple. We go into a room. The first time we go in with three people, one is the what we call the watcher can just watch them do their thing and keep them on track if they lose their place and all this stuff in the first, you know, first getting used to doing it. And then eventually we get to just doing it to people. And, and then from there on there, all well, I say that every single one that comes to super conscious, uh, to, to get, take the protocol, sorry, is will everyone ever do it all the time? Not necessarily. 
but the ones that do do it will do it well. Mm. And that's what I'm wanting to get to. Mm. The ones that didn't decide not to because of either whatever, whatever their own reasons are. There's, there's other, other good hypnosis out there. I'm not ever going to say, well, you need to do this because you don't need to do this. This is just for people who really like to stay out of the way. Mm. And people who really want to get outcomes with created by the mind. I like to empower people. Mm. If they come to me and they think I fixed them, that isn't empowering them. Yeah. And I want them to totally understand that they're doing this themselves. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, and that's, I, I, mean, that's I use that language as well. I use that language as well. Pure, you know, I say that, you know, at the moment I don't feel they have a choice. Mm. And if I was to make them do this, they still have no choice. Yeah. You know, I want them to understand that they have, that, you know, they, they will make the change and they will have the choice. Yeah. But they'll make the choice. And because it comes from them and not me, it'll last forever. And that's how I put it to them. Yeah, I think so it's important. The, I just keep my language as clean as I can. Mm. So that there's no subtle leading. There's no anything. Yeah. I, I, I'd be very careful about it. And that's what really that I, if that is written down, at first it can keep the uh, new people from... Because I'll, I'll make sure the sentences are written very <laughs> convoluted and making no same um, sort of leading at all. Mm. And they could say it much simpler. But once they get the gist of it, they can change it into their own language. Yeah. You know, so that's good. Yeah, bring yeah. your own personality to it. Yeah, it has to be. Yeah. It has to be that. And I think... Even if you didn't want to, like Freddie, when you teach the arrow, when you do whatever, people are going to do it like you, but they're going to add little slight nuances to it yeah. that are different. It's always going to be different, no matter what. Yeah, yeah. You don't want a whole, you don't, uh, you know, thousands of clones, do you? No. Um, but you, you want, no. you want, you know, like you say, they learn the protocol, and then they bring their own personality to it. Yeah. And be themselves, and I think that's yeah. the most. You know, the most important thing, that's what I was saying about you earlier, you know, that what people, and that's why I asked how important it was. Um, well, I think you know, it's being, being always important to a degree. Like, but I Freddie. think being your own authentic self, whoever yeah. that is. Yeah. You know, and, and well, you know Freddie Theory and Freddie Fun, all those <laughs> things are good. And that's how you have to have that personality that people will um get to but it's not made by you you're not doing it on purpose you're being authentic yeah and that's what you've got to be and just like you said like you trust the super conscious i think you should also trust yourself yeah you now which is another big thing yep just, yeah it's very you know, good and that's what some enough. people need a little help with yeah yeah yes that's true but that will come with time really yes it does and the great thing is they get outcomes, even when they're not totally in trust with themselves, even if yeah. they get totally in trust with the other part. It usually comes at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's amazing. And it's great work you're doing. Well, thank you. Well, I really appreciate you, you joining us today and doing this talk for us. Has anyone got any questions? Let's switch everyone back on. Um, let's unmute everyone. If anyone's got any questions, um, let me see if I can switch everyone back on. Um, I'm not sure where I can unmute you, but you can unmute yourself, I think. Yeah, go ahead. And I can do it. Hang on. Yeah, there. I think I've unmuted pretty much everyone. If you've got any questions for Inez, please ask. Yeah. I know we've all enjoyed it. It's been fantastic. But you've got, I'm going to say it again, you've got such a nice way about you. And I, I, there's only, I can only say it about a handful of people that I've met in my life. Um, where you feel, and there's only way I can describe, so a few people like it, you can describe that when you're with them, you feel like you're in the presence of somebody good. And that's how I feel. Oh, thank you. Thank you for you. Um, I'll make sure my head doesn't swell too much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I thank you kindly for that. That's wonderful. So has anyone got any questions before we close this down tonight? Nope. So how can we... See how how can... good we are? How can we book? How could someone book to do your training? Where would they um, go? Yeah, I've got it on my training. Oh, I also have a little book, and it's you can get it on simpsonprotocol.com. 
And it's more about the philosophy. It won't teach you how to do it, but it'll tell you everything you need to know about it. Okay. Okay, it's on simpsonprotocol.com and you can just get that free book. And the other thing that I have- book, is it? Is it free? It's an ebook. an ebook. E I, I do e print e them, but yeah, right now oh, it's what you got. Jeff's got it. Okay. He's got one now. Right, okay. All right. So uh, it's ultimately, I want you to understand the, more the philosophy. What are we doing here? All those right. sort of things. And uh, I also have another website, esdaleinstitute.com, where most of the stuff is. And can you say that again? Esdaleinstitute.com. And my email is usually very simple. Um, I'll give you the one that's simple. It's INES at INESSimpson.com. Right. That one is the simplest one for you to remember. <laughs> so. Okay. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. Yes, and I, I have to say that not only Simpson Protocol and everything that exists in your on your website and everything, but the interview you have with different people with so many different styles, it makes me learn so much. So uh, thank you very much. I mean, uh, I, I, I see it as a very big resource for learning as these type of uh, interviews Freddie, thank you very much. I think we need to learn continually. And I, I, you are one of the sources, great sources that I learn a lot from. I learn people and follow them again afterwards. <laughs> thank you for yeah, that. Well, thank you for that. And uh, I have to say when I did the Freddie's, we didn't do that show long ago. We had pretty good fun doing it. But <laughs> I still managed to learn a few things from that I didn't really use. And so I stole some things happily from him. So, you know, we, well, yeah, that, I, I think it's yeah. important. Pardon? We all, we all, none of us, you know, all of us, all of the techniques and all the protocols we come up with, they're, they're, we stand on, I always say we stand on the shoulders of giants. Uh, yeah, we do. You know, how far do you want to go back? You know, none of this stuff comes out of nowhere. It's what we've learned, what we've heard. You know, and I think yeah. we should all, and and I want people to nick my stuff, you know, and, and take something <laughs> from it. Because ultimately, we're about helping other people. Yeah. You know, it's not like I'm a I'm a you know an Ericksonian hypnotherapist, so I can't yeah. do anything else. You know, I'm this kind of yeah. therapist, so I can't do anything else. It doesn't matter to me if you if, if I can learn something from you that's going to help my client. I'm gonna I'm gonna learn it. I'm gonna take it. And I think that's how we should all be, really. You know, I leave. I know. I know Marina. I've known her recently, but I know that that's what she does. She's got a sponge, you know. If she yeah. learn something from someone, she's going to learn it. Rachel, yes, you. and she doesn't mind every time if you have to say anything, change something. She's just right there, ready to take it on and do it. Yeah. Well, I think you know if we all if we all live like that, then we can, you know, even this group here tonight, we have one idea that just pushes it a little bit further, that makes a change that we can all learn from. You know, uh, uh, instead of thinking, well, I've, I know this now, that's all I'm ever going to do. You know, to be open open to the, yeah, any ideas that are coming up and try yeah. them. You know, and I, I always say, you know, if you're going to practice, practice on someone who's not paying you in general. And then if it works. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but otherwise, you know, just keep, keep doing it. There's, a, there's a, a wonderful metaphor about the wood chopper. You might have heard of it. You have, have you? Uh, go ahead and do it anyway, because I, I probably get it wrong if you ask me. There's this young guy, he's like, he's 19, he's, you know, in, in the peak of his strength. And he goes to this, um, goes to learn how to cut trees down. So he goes and studies with this old wood chopper. And he, the wood chopper's now like, getting on. So anyway, through the week, he's teaching about this kind of wood, hardwood, softwoods, these kind of trees. And this 19 year old goes, look, you know, I've, I've listened now, but I'm here to cut trees. And I'm a young man and I can cut trees better than you can. So the, the, the guy challenges this old, the old teacher. So he said, okay, tomorrow when the sun comes up, we'll go out into the forest, we'll start chopping down trees. So they go out into the forest and the, the young guy's cutting his trees down. Every now and again, he looks over and he sees the old guy hunched over a log. And he feels a bit sorry for him, but he thinks, well, it's just my time. The time has come, you know, so he carries on chopping down trees. Every now and again during the day, he'd look over and the old guy sitting on a log, hunched over this log. And so at the end of the day, he said, look, I, I'm really sorry to say, look at the pile of logs I've cut, this young guy says. 
he said, but it's my time. You know, you're an old man. I'm a young man. It's just time. So the, so the old guy said, well, wait, wait a minute. He said, come and look at my pile. So the old guy's pile was half, a, half the size again. And he said, well, how did you do that? He said, you know, it's, it's amazing. He said, I saw you three or four times today. You hunched over that log. And the old guy says, yeah, I was sharpening my axe. So, you know, we all got to keep sharpening our axe, never give it up. That's my little metaphor to leave you with tonight. But it's been fantastic. And, and you are fantastic, I have to say. I love everything you do. You know, you just got to keep helping, teaching other people. Um, because it's generations and generations are going to be doing the Simpson Protocol. And they're going to be changing people's lives. People it's that funny. you're never going to meet are going to have their lives changed by your ideas. Which is yeah, the it's thing. funny, you know, when first when they called it Simpson Protocol, I was not quite strong enough yet at the time to say thank you. Now I say thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, no, they thank you. I think that's, the, that's, the, that's what we should be saying. But it's fantastic. Well, Mark, uh, if you want to get in touch with me, it's Inez at InezSimpson.com. I would right. love talking to you, though. Right, it's, br it's brilliant. And I, I have, I'm recording this and it'll be on my, on my YouTube channel. Uh, so, if, you know, I'll, I'll let everybody know who can't get to it right now, you know, that, so they can, they can watch this. Because it's of real value, yeah. as are you. Oh, thank you. Right. Well, if they want to know about the training, they can just go to the website. It'll tell them everything they need to know and probably Inez more. Inez. Is it Inez? Say it again. Simpsonprotocol.com. Oh, Inez at InezSimpson.com. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I'll put those. If you can text them to me, I'll sure. put them underneath the video. So okay. make sure they're correct. Okay. Well, thank everyone for joining us tonight. And I know, like me, you've all enjoyed it. And I want to thank Inez again. And um, I wish you the best in everything you do, as, as I do all of you. So it's great to see you. And uh, we'll see you soon. Right. Okay. Bye Thank for now. You, Bye. Bye, now. Bye, Marina. Bye, Mark. And everybody else I just met is ill. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good Thank night. Bye-bye.